Hi, everyone. This is Michelle Grimolia, the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond. And today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. Uh, and I have some updates for you for my weekly address. So uh, a couple of things, first and foremost, if you have checked your email um, today or uh, looked in your cubbies, you will have gotten a couple of announcements. So uh, first, uh, I have decided that based on uh, where the COVID numbers are in the county and our experience here on campus, that uh, we can discontinue the mask requirement for independent living at this time. Uh, and we're gonna continue to recommend masks for those that feel more comfortable with them. Uh, but we can at this time stop that mask requirement. Of course, we will continue to keep an eye on that. And if we need to, to change or pivot, we will do so. Uh, to that point, anyone that is experiencing any symptoms of illness, um, we are gonna ask that you stay out of the public uh, here on campus, uh, you know, stay in your home or, or kind of do things on your own um, until you're feeling better. Uh, obviously, if you'd like to take a COVID test, we have many of them. You just have to ask concierge and then, uh, or Mary Jo or Angel, if you live in independent living or if you live in uh, the health center, you can ask any nurse and we'll go ahead and give you a COVID test. Um, but the most important thing is if you have any symptoms of illness, you know, kind of keep to yourself. This last time that we had an uptick, several people had reported to us, oh yes, I had a sore throat or oh, I had a runny nose. Um, and then I still went to the dining room or I went to an activity and it turned out that you know COVID was on campus and was spread. So it's really just being respectful of um, your neighbors uh, and the staff if you aren't feeling great and um, staying in um, and then testing if you'd like to. Let's see, the next thing is that um, our second wellness RN, Angel Murphy, will be back with us starting on Thursday. Uh, many of you know that she suffered an injury um, here at work a couple of months ago, and um, we are thrilled that she has recovered enough to be able to return. I think she's actually been gone for about 10 weeks or close to it, so we're very excited. And uh, for those that were not um, aware or here on campus when Angel was here, uh, she works Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays uh, from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. as a wellness RN in independent living. Um, so she's here on the weekends for you and uh, can help you with basic nursing needs, vital signs, those kinds of things. So I um, look forward to seeing Angel soon. Uh, we put out an announcement yesterday that uh, this evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we have another Village of New Paltz Planning Board meeting. Uh, related to the application that we submitted for adding uh, three more cottage style duplexes here on campus. The, the meeting today is actually uh, contains a time for public comment. Uh, so if you're interested in commenting on the project, you have that information now to um, either call in or zoom into the meeting, or you certainly can attend in person. It's at the Elting Library. Um, we are looking hopefully for some of you to uh, uh, demonstrate support for the project. Um, it's, it's very limited in scope. Uh, we're working very closely with the village planning board and our engineers to make sure that there are no undue environmental impacts. Uh, the whole project is going to remain within the existing site plan. So we don't anticipate any issues there, um, but it will allow us to welcome some new neighbors and also to uh, grow our cash flow. Uh, you know, I was quite um, comfortable sharing in my memo yesterday that, you know, based on the monthly service fees that these cottages will generate and uh, the fact that they won't really require any additional staff, um, we're looking at approximately half a million dollars in additional cash flow to the community once the units are constructed. And um, as a not for profit organization, that means that all of that money kind of can go back into the pot and offset costs. Of course, right now, costs of everything are escalating. Um, you know, Woodland Pond is facing the same inflationary pressures that the sort of general economy is. So um, we are hoping that some of you that are in favor of the project feel comfortable um, coming out at, you know, at the public hearing or public comment period today and, and expressing that support. Uh, independent living folks that are uh, signed up to have a booster shot for COVID, originally that was going to be on Wednesday. You all signed up for specific times. You should have received a call from Crystal yesterday 
letting you know that that got moved to Thursday. So the booster clinic is now going to be on Thursday in the art studio. Uh, so please keep that in mind with the same times that you uh, had, if you had signed up for Wednesday. If you have any questions about that or would like to be added to the waiting list for a booster, uh, please let concierge know. Today at 2 p.m., we have uh, what should prove to be a very um, uh, reverent and important uh, presentation regarding uh, the Honor Flight Program. And um, so we had four of our residents that attended or participated in uh, an Honor Flight Mission, uh, Honor Flight Mission number 25, which was on uh, April 9th of this year. Um, those residents and a number of other people are going to uh, present uh, some information about the Honor Flight Program. Um, we've got some, some uh, personnel or board members from the Honor Flight organization. Um, it should prove to be a very uh, important and meaningful presentation today at 2 p.m. That will be recorded and available for re-airing on our YouTube channel, but it would be great if you could come in person. Uh, Thank you to Al Chasen and the Art Scope Committee for putting together last night's incredible staff art exhibit and opening. Um, I was very honored to be there and um, not sure if those of you that were there realized, but I did have to get up at one point to get a tissue. Um, every single staff member made me cry at one point or another with their stories. Um, I really wish that so many more people, residents would have attended. Um, these are the kinds of things that really um, emphasize the family aspect of Woodland Pond and how important it is that you get to know our staff and, and in ways that maybe you don't know them. Uh, there's a lot of vulnerability, there's sharing, there's kindness, um, but it's, it's a really enlightening type of thing. So I would implore you to really look at your calendars every month and really plan on coming to the path or coming to the great room for these activities. Um, I understand that the Pondeliers concert in the health center yesterday was amazing. We have two more of them coming this week. I know that everyone's gotten used to, you know, watching things on 1340 or on our CCTV channel or on YouTube, but being here and being present is really where it's at from a Woodland Pond perspective. So please, please, please try to come to these events in person. Please come out of your homes. Um, it's safe enough to do so. If you feel uncomfortable, you can just put a mask on. But these are the kinds of things that make Woodland Pond, Woodland Pond, and we hope that you, that you join. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to mention relates to an announcement that we put in the Chanticleer last week. Um, because we have seen sort of a, an uptick in the, the number of apartments and cottages uh, in independent living that are particularly warm, um, we're not sort of seeing those um, air conditionings we put on for the housekeeping staff. Um, in order to protect the, the health of the staff and the comfort of the staff when they're performing services, um, we have determined that if a housekeeper arrives for your normal cleaning and it's above uh, 79 degrees in your apartment or cottage, that cleaning will not proceed. Um, it's just too hot for the staff. It places them into an unhealthy condition. Um, so please make sure that prior to your housekeeping uh, appointment, that your thermostat is down and reading to the, the, the ambient temperature in the room must be 79 or below. Um, so make sure you turn it down, please, soon enough so that you can do that. Um, and then we will let that housekeeping uh, appointment proceed. Oh, and just one more additional item. So the bistro is open for lunch, uh, Monday through Friday. And so for those of you that remember, this is a nice, uh, nice lunch option. It does not require a reservation. This is a seated lunch. So you come down to the bistro section of the dining room, have a seat, um, be waited on for a, a, a typical lunch service. Uh, there's a number of items on the menu every day. Uh, this is available to anyone in the community that is able to safely dine in the uh, main dining room or the bistro. And again, you don't need reservations. So we're hoping that um, the interest in the lunch picks up. Uh, this is a great alternative for those folks that uh, don't uh, prefer to contend with the reservation system for dinner. Um, and so we really encourage you to come for lunch. It's, there's some really nice options. Uh, we are still, of course, offering our typical pub service. We've also just enhanced our grab and go type items that are in the uh, simply to go case there in the pub as well. So lots of options um, for getting food uh, throughout the day. 
but we are hoping that uh, we do see the numbers go up for lunch because it's a, it is a really nice um, midday option for um, you know, served food for you. So that's all that I had for today. Uh, I hope that you all have a great afternoon and I hope to see you at the Honor Flight presentation at two o'clock. Thank you.